In this video we are going to build an awesome AI voice assistant for real estate agencies that can handle bookings for property viewings. It can check property availability, schedule bookings and can even be extended to automatically send confirmation emails about your booking. Let me show you how it works. How can I help you? Hi, I would like to schedule an appointment to view one of your properties. Which property are you interested in viewing? I'm interested in viewing the property at Elm Street. Hold on a sec. The available dates for viewing the property on Elm Street are Tuesday, December 31st at 3 p.m. and Thursday, January 2nd at 1 p.m. January 2nd sounds good. Great choice. May I have your name, please? My name is Tom. This'll just take a sec. Successfully booked. I look forward to meeting you, Tom. As you can see, the assistant successfully booked the slot for the viewing. If you would like to build it yourself, follow along the video. I will show you how to do it. And I will also share all the resources and templates you will need, so you will be able to implement it in your own business. To get started, we will need to have a couple of tools. We will be using Webby AI, which will provide the infrastructure for the assistant. We will use make.com to build the automation workflow for checking availability and making the bookings. And to have some kind of database, we will be using Google Sheets due to its simplicity, but you can use any third-party tools or CMS that points to your database. But that's enough with the talking, let's jump right into it. As you can see, in Google Sheets I created a properties table. You can see that we have three columns, the address of the property, the viewing date and the name. Some of the cells are empty for the name. This will mean that there are no bookings for the slot yet. To get started with the voice assistant, we need to create a Webby account. You can do that on Webby.ai. If you don't already have an account, you need to create one. Otherwise, we can just simply log in. Once we are in, create our assistant. So click on Create Assistant. I'm going to call our assistant Emma. And we are not going to use any templates. So click on Blank Template. Then click Create Assistant. Once we created the assistant, we can add the first message. This will be the first message the assistant will say when it picks up the phone. So let's say, hey, this is Emma. How can I help you? Below that, we can find the system prompt. This is where we can assign a personality to the assistant and tell the exact steps it should do to execute what we need. I already prepared with the prompt that we will be using, so I will just paste it in. I'm going to put the prompt in the description. You can use it for any kind of businesses, but I highly recommend to check out the documentation to see how to write the perfect prompt. I will also link the documentation in the description. On the right side, you can find our LLM provider. I suggest setting the model to GPT-4 O Mini because it's faster and cheaper. You can leave the temperature and max tokens as it is. Now let's switch to the transcriber. The transcriber is responsible for converting speech to text. So our LLM will be able to understand what we are saying. It looks good, so I'm not going to touch it. Let's go to voice. For voice, I recommend using 11 labs because they are very high quality. And sometimes it almost sounds like we are talking to a real person. However, it's usually more expensive than the rest. Let's move to functions. And we will see a section about tools. Tools is basically a custom functionality that we can assign the assistant to perform. We are going to create two tools. The first one will check whether there is an available slot for the booking and the second one will book the appointment for us. Let's click on select tools. Then click on create new tool. Then click on new tool again. We are going to use make.com. So select make and for now leave the server URL blank. We will get back to it once we have our make.com workflow. Click on next and we are going to provide one property to the tool. I'm going to call it address and we need to add the description. This way we can provide additional information and tell how we are going to use it. Let's write that the address of the property the user is interested in booking a viewing appointment. Click on save. And we are going to set this required. So it won't trigger the tool without the user providing an address. Then click on next. Here we need to assign a name to our tool. So let's call it check available dates. And for the description, let's say this tool, this tool's purpose is to check if there is a free slot 
for booking a viewing appointment for the desired property. It will return the available dates or no dates when there isn't any free slots. Now we can click on next and create the tool. Cool, we have our first tool. Let's create our second one, which will be responsible for booking the appointment. Click on new tool, select make again and click on next. And here we need to add three properties. The first one is name. And this will be the person who wants to book an appointment. So the name of the person who wants to book an appointment. Click on save. Let's add their second property, which will be the address. This will be the address of the property. for which the user would like to book an appointment for. Click on save and add one more property, which will be the date time. And for the description, let's say the time and date of the booking. Then we can click save and I'm going to add all properties as required. Once we have that, we can click on next and I'm going to call our tool book appointment. This tool will book an appointment for the viewing. Then we can click on next, then create our tool. We created our tools, so let's go back to the functions tab and add the tools we've just created. Make sure to include this tab because if you skip it, the agent won't trigger them no matter what you do. With that, we have everything set up with Webby. We just need to add functionality to these tools and we are going to use make.com to build our automation workflow. So it will check availability and also will make a booking for us. Once you're logged into make.com, let's create a new scenario and let's call it check availability. The first module we need to add is a webhook. Select custom webhook. I'm going to call it check availability. Once you click save, you will see a link. This is where our WAPI tool will send all the data we need. So let's copy this link and go back to the tools page in WAPI and paste it in the server URL field for the check available dates tool. Then click on save. Now let's try it out if it works by calling our agent. Let's go back to make.com and run our scenario. In WAPI we can trigger a call by clicking on talk with assistant. Hey, this is Emma. How can I help you? Hi, I would like to make an appointment for an apartment viewing. Which property are you interested in booking a viewing appointment for? I'm interested in viewing the property at Elm Street. One moment. We successfully received the data, so let's set up our Google Sheets module. We need to search rows, connect to your Google account and select your spreadsheet. Select the sheet name and for the filter we need to add the address. The operator will be contains. And we are going to check the address that's coming from WAPI. Click OK and next we need to add an array aggregator which will create an array from the bundles we received from the Google Sheets module and I would like to include the viewing date and name fields in the array. Next we need to use an iterator which will loop through all the elements in the array so we can perform operations like filtering and date formatting for each items. After that let's add a set variable tool which will take care of getting name of the day but before setting that up, I'm going to add a filter between the iterator. This filter will remove the items from the list where the name fields already exist. That means that those slots are not available to book. I'm going to call it filter free slots. And for the condition, we need to check the name field. And we will keep the item when the name equals to empty string. 
Okay, we set up the filter. Now let's get the name of the day from the date we received from Vapi. Let's call the variable day. We need to add a format date util. The first parameter will be the viewing date and the second will be the format and it will give us the name of the day by typing DDDD. After that I'm going to add the text aggregator which will merge the dates from the list into one text. The text will be the viewing date and the day. Let's open advanced settings. The row separator will be other and let's set a comma as a separator. After that, just for convenience, I'm going to assign the result to a variable. I will call it free slot. And the value will be the text. Now we need to set up a router because we will send back dates to Wappy. And if we don't have any dates, we will tell Wappy that there are no available dates. Add the router module and let the webhook response to each route. Set up a filter to the first one. I'm going to set the label to has free slots and select free slots for the condition. And the operator will be exist. So if we have free slots, we can send that back to the voice agent. Finally, we need to set up the webhook response. To the body, we need to provide the format in JSON. So let's open a JSON formatter because it's much easier to see the syntax there. And I'm going to paste the format that WebP expects for the response. Click process. Then we can copy this and paste it into the body of the webhook. Now we need to select the tool call ID and also the result, which will be the free slots. Let's also set up the case when there are no dates. So I'm going to copy this. And to the result, I'm going to write, there are no available dates for the property. Now let's try if our flow works as we expect. So I'm going to call our agent. Let's run the workflow and call our assistant. Hey, this is Emma. How can I help you? Hi, I would like to make an appointment for a viewing. Of course. Which property are you interested in viewing? I'm interested in viewing the property at Elm Street. Hold on a sec. The available date for viewing the property at Elm Street is Tuesday, December 31st at 3 p.m. Would that work for you? It looks like everything works. We got the date that is available. Now let's set up the workflow for booking these appointments. Create a new workflow and let's call it book viewing appointment. The first module will be a webhook, call it book viewing appointment. Copy the URL and paste it in the WAPI tool. Now call our agent again and see if we receive all the data we need from the webhook. After you call the agent, you will see that it sends the name address and the date. Next, I want to format the date because we need it in the same format as we have it in Google Sheets. Let's add the set variable module and I'm going to add the format date util. The first parameter will be the date time and the second will be the exact format we have in Google Sheets. Once we have that, we need to search for rows in our Google spreadsheet. Select the spreadsheet and the sheet name. For the filter, add the address and the operator will be contains. I'm going to use case insensitive. Add the address from the webhook. And add an end rule, which will check for the viewing date. Set the operator to equal to the date variable we just set. Add another filter, which will look for the name and it will leave the rows where the name is an empty string. Then click OK. Now let's set up a router. If we have results from the Google Sheets module, we will update the found row. And if it doesn't find any rows, we will just send back that the booking was unsuccessful. The first route will go to a Google Sheets module to update a row. And we need to set up a filter here. 
the condition will be total number of bundles and the operator will be greater than zero. Let's connect the Google Sheets module with our profile and once we have that let's select the spreadsheet and the row number should be coming from the previous Google Sheets module. Here we are going to update the name field. After that let's add the webhook response and I'm going to copy the same JSON format we used in the check availability flow and let's set up a response to the other route. I'm going to paste the same response but for the result I'm going to say that the booking was unsuccessful. And that's it. Now let's try calling our agent to see if it works as we expect it to be. Let's run the scenario and call the agent. Hey, this is Emma. How can I help you? Hi, I'm interested in viewing the property at Elm Street. Just a sec. The available date for viewing the property on Elm Street is Tuesday, December 31st at 3 p.m. Would you like to book this appointment? Yes, please. Could you please provide me with your name? My name is Tom. Give me a moment. I'm sorry, but it seems the booking was unsuccessful. Would you like to try another property instead? Let's figure out the problem. It looks like it's not formatting the date properly. Switch the operator for the viewing date to equal to in the time operator section. Click OK. Then let's try calling our agent again. Hey, this is Emma. How can I help you? Hi, I'm interested in booking an appointment for a viewing. Great. Which property are you interested in viewing? I'm interested in viewing the property at Elm Street. This will just take a sec. The available viewing date for the property at Elm Street is Tuesday, December 31st. Would you like to book this appointment? Yes, please. Could you please provide me with your name? My name is Tom. One moment. Your appointment for viewing the property at Elm Street has been successfully booked for Tuesday, December 31st at 3 p.m. As you can see, the assistant handled everything perfectly. It checked availability, collected contact details, and scheduled the viewing without any human intervention. If you need a custom solution for your business, feel free to reach out to me or write a comment below. Thank you so much for watching this tutorial. I will see you in the next one.